Welcome, welcome. Those of you who are nice and prompt and even a little bit early for this afternoon's webinar. Lovely to have you here. Uh, we're kind of in the informal pre-show at the moment. So um, still time to get yourself comfortable, all that kind of stuff. Um, probably a bit too late to run to the kettle, but maybe the biscuit tin is within reach still. People coming across the doormat, we're reaching 30 people here already. So uh, we had uh, a couple of hundred booked for this afternoon's session. So we won't do anything formal yet in terms of kicking off and introducing. We'll just give people a couple of minutes to gather. Uh, but things that you can do that would be really helpful to give us things to get our teeth into, and Dennis has started us off already with a chat message, is to uh, let us know in the chat maybe where you're joining from this afternoon, what you're hoping to get out of the session, and um, what made you curious about or interested in this afternoon's workshop, whether this is the first time you've worked with Think Productive or whether this is a multiple return visit. And there's just a little note there on the screen to check that when you uh, send a chat message to us, just check that the option to broadcast it to all of us is um, is enabled, uh, because that means we can get all the good value of your contributions uh, out of this afternoon session as well. So we're getting up to 40. Uh, the other thing that is available in this afternoon session is the closed captioning. I can just see that one or few people have already turned that on at their end. So you should get a live captioning of what myself and Dee are saying. So good afternoon to Dennis. Good afternoon to Stephen. Uh, good afternoon to Donna from Aberdeen. Catherine there from Nottingham. I've done the Productivity Ninja training before, so I'm back. Fantastic. <laughs> Dennis, uh, one of our regular friends and join us for these three sessions, uh, joining from sunny Stanmore in northwest London. It is definitely not sunny where I'm at the moment. Dee, what's it like where you are? No, no. bright, but pretty cold. Dull and grim and has that extra half term complexity that's going on for many of us as well at the moment. Uh, so uh, we'll just wait 30 more seconds and then we'll get going because we've got a packed agenda for this afternoon. We're trying to give you maximum value in this little 45 minute session. Uh, welcome Tom from Oxfordshire, another returnee. Mary also from Oxfordshire, that's an interesting coincidence. Two right next to each other in the chat. Um, so yeah, if you've messed us before, maybe drop in the names of some of the workshops you've done. Um, or if you're here for the first time, let us know how you ended up here and what you're curious about. Valentina from Italy, that's our first introductory, uh, sorry, international attendee for this afternoon. Perhaps there are more. Uh, and Sarah there in Canesham, not too far away from where I am over into North Somerset as well. So Sarah, brilliant to have you back for another one of our Productivity Ninja Skills tasters. Um, so let's get going formally. I will just uh, give a pause uh, for my colleague Klein, who's going to edit this video. So he's got a clean start for when the recording of this goes up on YouTube. So welcome, welcome this afternoon to our free Productivity Ninja Skills webinar. This is a little bit of a taster of our work at Think Productive, but also our aim is to give you some really good, practical, useful stuff that you can use straight away. Um, on the session this afternoon is myself. My name's Lee, Lee Cotier. I am one of the Think Productive team of Productivity Ninjas. And for those of you who doubt that is a real job title that exists, it's actually on my business card. Uh, kind of derives from my colleague Graham Alcott's How to Be a Productivity Ninja book, which is connected to where all this started. And I'm joined this afternoon by my colleague Dee, who is in our HQ team. Dee's our learning success manager, and she works with our clients and talks to them about what their needs are and talks about how we might be able to help as well. So I'm on the delivery side and Dee is on the consultancy side, and we're both bringing our perspectives to the session this afternoon. Um, if you've never met Think Productive before and you're wondering what on earth this is all about, then first of all, welcome. Um, maybe you're discovering this recording on YouTube. Uh, Think Productive, we are a niche training and coaching company founded about 10, more than that, 12 years ago in the UK. Uh, we're interested in helping people in all sorts of settings and organizations and all kind of work types. Um, 
with two things. Like one of them you've already guessed is productivity. The clue is in the name of our trainers, the company, many of our workshops, it's dropped in there too. Like um, lots of potential definitions of what that might mean, but like how can we do our best work could be one of them. Um, but all of our workshops, whether it's shorter sessions like today, half day workshops, whether they're delivered in person or online, um, we're interested in the interaction of that, the work and the workflow with this other thing that's really important to us. That other thing has got different names. Sometimes it's called well-being. Sometimes it's called work-life balance. Sometimes it's called having a life. Um, mm -hmm. And we think those two things are inextricably interlinked. And we, we think and help people a lot with the dance of those two things together. What we're sharing with you this afternoon is a little bit of a taster of some ideas, some selected ideas, obviously not everything, from three of our full workshops uh, that what we call our um, hybrid working trilogy, as it were. Obviously, we were helping people in the before times and continue to do so with all sorts of things to do with work and well-being. But obviously, there was quite a big change in terms of how work happens and where it's done and how we get it done uh, coming up to nearly three years ago. Uh, and so there's an additional need for people to think about the challenges of productivity and well-being in the hybrid and the remote workplace world. So uh, quite a lot of the content in the first half of the session is from our two-hour workshop called the Productivity Ninja's Guide to Hybrid Working. We also have some selected ideas from our workshop that's more for supervisors, managers, leaders called Leading Hybrid Teams. And we've also got a few nuggets in there from our workshop, our half-day workshop called Supercharge Your Team Comms, which was always a need in the before times, but, but has become a new challenge in new ways since we all went remote and hybrid. Well, not all of us, of course. Um, how are we going to structure this afternoon? Um, going to start by a little bit of a stock take in a minute. So if you haven't typed anything in the chat yet, be ready with some contributions. How's it been? How's it going for you? Uh, I'm then going to share what we call our four modes work, four modes of work model from the Productivity Ninja's Guide to Hybrid Working session. Really good ways of kind of interrogating and troubleshooting and hacking and fixing with tactics and tips, like getting our best work done in the hybrid working world. And then towards the latter part of the session, we're going to move a little bit more towards the sort of some of the teams and culture aspects of this experience that we've all been living over the last few years. And we're going to look at aspects like well-being and lifestyle, connection, inclusion, what the current and indeed the future workplace might look like and where we might head. Um, so we've got quite a lot to cover. You can imagine we'll be moving at some pace, uh, but we will make sure we leave some time at the end for Q&A and discussion, although we definitely want your interaction along the way as well. Um, and we sometimes even do a little bit of secret after show as well. If people are still keen to hang around after our official 2.45 finish, then we're happy to do a five or 10 minutes of extension for that kind of thing as well. So I, I'd love you to all head to the chat and you can respond in any way you would like. Uh, and we've got well over 120 people on the session this afternoon. You can respond in any way you would like to any of these four questions. You will see that they are basically variants on the same question, just flipped in two different ways. What have you loved about working from home? What's not been so good? What have you missed about the office? Or maybe what have you not missed about the office? So we'll just let some of those contributions come through. Um, if, as we're recording this session, we comment on or draw attention to your or any of your contributions, just know that the recording won't see these text chats uh, online, and we would only ever refer to somebody by a first name in our voice comment as well. So let's have a look as it squirrels past. This is lovely. Lots of people talking about the flexibility, lack of commute, mm -hmm. additional dog time. I like that kind of thing. Um, Ellie there missed the catch up on everyone's weekends. So we're already pointing to a sort of change in the social and relationships aspect of work. Joanne there saying missed the personal connections in the office. Will again, not being around other people regularly. Um, Amanda there, no commuting, great. Feelings of isolation, not so great. Office politics, I don't know whether you're saying you feel left out of that or you're missing that or not missing that. Um, so really, really interesting range there. It's coming through so quick and fast. I'm just going to have a look at any sort of particular things that have come up. 
Jessica there, protecting work time at home is easier sometimes. Interesting. Some people may say, actually, do you know, I found it harder. But things like motivation, procrastination, distraction may be on the agenda as well. Thank you so much for those. Um, if you're scrolling up and down, having a good look, there's some really good nuggets in there. Let's just try and bring together some key themes that we've noticed from doing this work with people over the last couple of years. And it's been very much this mix of the good and the not so brilliant, um, particularly in the early days when a lot was changing, like the first year, first year, 18 months of lockdown, lots of ambiguity and uncertainty and feeling of risk and that stuff like that. Um, everything suddenly went online, so we were kind of bombarded by all the messaging platforms and the meetings, this feeling of being socially and physically isolated, but maybe digitally overconnected broke out as well. Um, there's a lot of people kind of reporting this feeling of work-life blur, like there doesn't seem to be a distinction anymore between the work me and the home me. Um, and again, as you sort of talked about, you know, some of the things around connection and relationships have been tricky, like how do you create community and collaboration in a more distributed workforce? How do you get everyone involved? How do you make sure you look after everyone? How do you make sure that everyone gets the flexibility they need? I'm very conscious it's half term week this week, so many of us might have additional things that we're juggling this week. Um, but there's also, and many of you have brilliantly commented on the chat as well, there's also been lots and lots of benefits, a feeling of empowerment and trust and giving people what they need to just get on with things, the less travel, in some ways better work-life balance, uh, but maybe not that boundary that some of us have liked. Natasha there in the chat saying, I've missed the distinction between home and work when you actually go to the office. I've got a quote in a minute that you're going to absolutely love, Natasha. Um, but also, and you may have noticed, those of you with, with eagle eyes for detail, that the last two on this slide are actually the same as on the previous slide of challenges. Maybe there's some been things that have actually been really good and beneficial in terms of our, our attitude to team connections and relationships. Maybe there's some really good stuff around flexibility and inclusion in the workforce as well. We'll be talking about that later. So here's the quote, Natasha, that I was I was alluding to a few seconds ago. Absolutely love this one. I wish I knew who had said it. Um, we started off this workshop was called the Productivity Ninja's Guide from Working from Home, because <laughs> that's what we thought we were going to do for a little bit. And now it's becoming semi-permanent. So we're no longer working from home. We're, we're sleeping in the office. And you think, well, hang on. Like, we've been doing this for a while now. So like like nearly three years in, why have 130 people turned up for a 45 minute boost on this topic? Still feels like work in progress for us individually and as organizations. We're still getting a lot of calls from clients to kind of help, help them explore and thrash out and refine their approach to all of this stuff. Um, and really sort of recognizing that this was something we didn't plan and we weren't expecting and when it first happened we kind of had to make do and mend and improvise for a little bit um but it looks like this is going to be the way the world is going to be so uh, let's kind of get really good at doing this stuff hold on to all the amazing benefits that some of you have surfaced in the chat uh, I love that Yvonne there says I actually had to have a lunch break working at home with my new co-worker which is my husband yes there are some ways that uh, some opportunities that were not available before and just kind of make this a really effective like the water that we swim in so brilliant stuff in the chat there um, don't wait for me to specifically prompt with a question or a thought to get your responses please just continue to put brilliant stuff in in the chat the peer learning on these sessions is just as good as the things that d and i have to share but i do want to share with you something really very specific and practical and i'm inviting you to uh, just have a little bit of a peek into what we call our four modes of work model so this is something we spend a lot more time with on the Productivity Ninja's Guide to Hybrid Working. And it's a framework that we allow people to explore how it's going in terms of different work aspects of the hybrid working experience, notice what's working, what they can build on, notice where maybe there's some of the challenges and maybe they're looking for some new tactics. So you can see here that it invites us to kind of think about our work in four different kinds, four different modes, four different themes. We've got 
work we're doing on our own where it's just us working on the thing that's the top row uh, and then we've got work where other people are involved which always brings up the complexity doesn't it um and then the distinction across the columns is whether we're doing that work in our own time like when we decide um asynchronous working to use a bit of jargon or whether we're having to do that work at the same time as someone else so live in the moment synchronous working as well so i'm just going to give you a little bit of an insight into each of the four modes and i'm going to invite you as we talk about each mode to head to the chat and give us some observations about how you are doing with each mode like what's working well what you found helpful but also maybe share some of the challenges or some of the difficulties you found of of working well in each of these particular modes so solo mode that was in the top left hand corner that was you doing your own thing in your own time this is the deep work the backstage work the sort of slightly away from other people work really really important for a lot of us in terms of aspects of our role that involve planning deciding creativity thinking writing problem solving uh, but you can see the little owl there trying to get into their bubble because solo work is like needs needs other humans to leave us alone for a little bit. Now, interesting there, Louise and Julia of saying this has actually been easier at home. There may well be somebody literally about to type in the chat. I find this much harder at home as well. So one of the themes is different people have experienced this differently. Um, but at the heart of good solo work, and any of you who have been on some of our other workshops, perhaps the way of the Productivity Ninja workshop, and you know about our attitude to attention and focus and distraction, you'll know that solo work is really about just trying to get in the focus and the flow. And there's so many things created by both humans and machines and apps and platforms that really just want to break our focus and flow. And it's so hard to then get that back and get in the moment as well. Uh, Stephen there observing that like when good focus and flow might be, might be a different kinds of day for different people as well. Early morning is good for solo, Stephen finds. And uh, Natasha says, I found solo work is easier now. I can have meetings on the office days. Interesting. So I think Natasha's there saying that as the meetings seem to be more populated on just some of the days of the week, and then maybe you're getting less meetings on the solo days or indeed no meetings on the solo days. Lee. Hey. Jessica has always also mentioned that she finds it difficult to do solo work at home because emails are intrusive. Yeah. Um, I imagine that's the thing that a lot of people are sharing that same frustration. Definitely. So this has been a thing that was always a problem in the past, but then we all went remote and all the electronic platforms got even hotter and even faster. And there's this expectation that we will be there to respond to the pings. That's why people find it difficult to kind of get into what we on the other workshops would call the sort of good serial repeated monotasking mode that is really good for solo work. Uh, and we find ourselves tempted into that, that multitasking mode, which I'm totally willing to admit we all end up find ourselves doing it, but it's not brilliant necessarily for good, effective, um, kind of feel good solo mode like we all like to tick some things off our to-do list that's why many of us have written something on a list that we've already done just to give ourselves a tick yeah um so monotasking is kind of the mode that you want to get into for solo so again i can see some really good contributions in in the chat about how people are finding it like hard or easier at home interesting difference of experience you might want to think about your physical stealth and camouflage. That's something we explore on the way of the productivity ninja. Um, like, you know, just other humans need to leave me alone for a bit. You know, it used to be the other humans in the office. Now it might be the other humans that we're sharing the home workplace with as well. Uh, and also thinking about the, the digital stealth and camouflage. Iga's just said there, like, I put myself as unavailable and teams and stuff like that. So, um, you know, turning down the notifications, changing your status in different platforms or devices, putting autoresponders on just to give you in those windows of solo work, some really kind of good way of just stepping away, letting the other people do their things while you do your thing. Um, I really like the comment uh, up here from Willow, like some people have reacted differently 
to the experience of solo work. Some people have actually found it much easier to get that kind of stuff done at home. Some people really found doing silent solo work in a shared office quite difficult. Some of us in turn got lots of benefit and energy from that. That's something we're going to talk about in the next uh, work mode, which is tandem. Mm -hmm. um, tandem mode. Um, sometimes people didn't realize that this was a thing until we pointed out to them. So tandem mode, we did experience a lot when we were in the office alongside a colleague, kind of mostly doing each other's own thing, but we were kind of in the presence of and around the energy of another person. And there'd be the occasional little bit of chit chat, you know, do you want a cup of tea? Like, what did you do at the weekend? Like just being around other people who were also doing their own work kind of sometimes created a good experience of focus and flow and stuff like that. Many of us then suddenly realized, oh, I'm really missing that when like we suddenly all went to home and there's been some really interesting experiments and if you found yourself having to replace tandem working in some kind of online way or some kind of other imaginative way drop them in the chat um you can see there a little screenshot from our regular think productive wednesday wormhole where we all just pile on for an hour every wednesday morning say hi mostly get on with doing our own stuff but we can kind of hear the office buzz and stuff like that as well Alyssa is there saying we have a dedicated one hour each week where we do tandem work as a team but we end up chatting a lot but that's good too as well we'll talk about building community but yeah if you didn't realize that you were missing tandem mode have a think about how you could bring some of that back in uh, it's really good for motivation presence connection innovation creativity maybe just having a sounding board from someone else will they really like that in the chat um the idea of not just working in the office or at home, the sort of third space, which is co-working spaces as well. I've got some comments on that in the section around future workplace. Yeah, there might be somewhere we can go to that isn't our house, but it isn't actually as far as going to the office. There might be other humans there who have other aspects and things in their lives other than just our standard work colleagues as well. Dennis there, I really love that. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Miro and other tools like that in, um, in tag mode in a few minutes. Um, in fact, tag mode is happening now. So tag mode, we've moved down the model and we're talking about when we're doing something in concert and cooperation with someone else, um, but that is happening in separate times. And traditionally, the way this happened is people emailed each other a lot. <laughs> um, and that is still the case. It's like tag your it, but also, especially in the lockdown, even the other tools alongside email that we can use to ping messages to each other, they suddenly proliferated and all the volume and noise of each of them went up as well. So certainly on the Supercharge Your Team comms workshop, we've been talking about confusion, how to get a grip of all these other digital devices and platforms that need a piece of our brains. And we want them to help us connect to and communicate with our virtual colleagues. Um, but sometimes they might be getting away in the way. Um, there's this kind of mixed feeling of like, ah, oh, it's just overloaded by all of this digital stuff. But also nobody's getting back to me about the things that I actually need them to get back to me about. Or maybe they did get back to me and I'm worried I've missed it. Yeah. So the kind of agenda that we help people on when it comes to really good tag working um, is help teams really think about that sort of digital comms infrastructure, that remote working infrastructure. What platforms are they using? What tools are they using? And for what? Uh, which is good at different things? Have you kind of over proliferated in these tools? Could you go on a bit of a sort of a, a thinning out? Could some be retired now we've kind of found our way? Um, and also, what is the sort of rules of the road around expectations for sort of flexibility, response time, when people are online, when people are very much going to be offline and stuff like that. Uh, I've got a couple of examples from um, our own team. So we use Slack internally, primarily as our think productive way of think producting, talking to itself. And these are two real messages from like pretty early on in year one of the pandemic. You can see a reference there to the schools closing and all the small people coming home. And that's two members of our team, Jess and Elena, kind of really helping us each understand what kind of mode that they're in that day. 
Dee, there's been some lovely stuff coming in the chat in that section. Is there anything you particularly noticed or wanted to draw yes. our attention to? Um, we had one, um, one group member talking about feeling like when they go into quiet mode to get work done, that other people were expecting immediate responses. So mm. I think this solution will really help them just publicly announcing it and making it part of the company culture to say, I'm doing some deep working. I won't be contactable. Um, there's also been a lot of discussion about when our friends go into the work space, they find that those days tend to be a write-off because <laughs> meeting after meeting and yeah. socializing after socializing. So when you're talking about managing expectations, mm. that could be the same on their day in the office as well to say, I'm in the office this time in my calendar, I'm going to be doing some deep work yeah. or making use of resources. Or being um, with humans in a way that's important. And so the digital stuff will come tomorrow. Yeah, there's been some really good things about how it's changed the structure of our days. So you might have a particular part of your day where you do deep work or tandem work mm -hmm. and how it's changed the structure of our weeks. And particularly as we're now in this pattern where some days are at home and some days we physically gather. Dennis has also raised the issue of working across time zones with different colleagues as well mm. and some of the challenges that that brings as well but also the solutions they use um teams instruction and video support to Fantastic. help people working across different zones yeah i've got some comments about how we've been able to widen our recruitment pool as a result of all this a little bit later on and indeed now maybe many of us are finding ourselves working with not just people in different parts of the uk but further afield in different time zones Last thing on TAG, um, it's really interesting watching, particularly over the last year, people have started to realize that TAG's important, but maybe emails <laughs> and other messaging platforms aren't the best place to do TAG in. So we're starting to see um, teams exploring other platforms that are still apps and software, but maybe are a little bit more built for purpose of actually doing work in. So there was a mention from Dennis of like Miro, shared whiteboards, um, shared Google Docs, all that kind of stuff. Um, like ability to, to collaborate, but without just doing that via pinging messages to each other. Uh, and then the last one, and we've had a little reference to it already, which is that sometimes you both, you all need to get together, and by you, it could be a couple of you, or it could be many of you, in real time and do a thing. <laughs> and just doing that together is the best way of getting it done. So that's the team version of the model. Um, and sometimes there's just no substitute for this. Um, and getting people together synchronously is the solution. But it's a little bit harder now, or maybe it's too easy. Like I've had both versions of this, which is people being overloaded by the amount of virtual meetings that they are like invited to. Maybe it's like a little bit too easy to have a virtual meeting, uh, but also missing the quality and the extra things that come from in-person meetings. So, you know, even those of us who organizations had the tech and were using it before three years ago, like we weren't all brilliantly familiar with virtual meetings. So we, we've got a lot better, I think, um, although we still occasionally have hiccups. You know, this kind of way of delivering learning feels completely natural now. It certainly wouldn't have been the case, you know, four or five years ago when we did online workshops, but it was the minority choice amongst our clients. Um, and again, you know, even though we've been doing it for a long time, the virtual meetings thing, I think there's still work to do there to kind of continually revisit and refine our practices and look at how this is a component in the overall getting stuff done and also looking after ourselves and each other kind of equation. Uh, and then, of course, there's the new challenge of now some people are physically together whilst on some people are very remote and it's like wow hybrid meetings how does that work and there's all sorts of interesting new technologies with big display boards in the office and little 360 view cameras and all that kind of stuff that is that kind of brave new frontier of hybrid meetings d is our chat correspondent as we just close out our thoughts there on the four modes model anything else that's come in, in the yeah last few minutes? there's there's been a discussion surrounding meetings and people feeling like because they're not closely together anymore people are organizing meetings for everything when it would have just been a quick conversation now it's a meeting yeah um 
and also they feel they can't say no because they're mm. online yeah um, it's like well of course you can come like what why couldn't you yeah so there's this uplifting expectation and as you say everything's a zoom call or a teams chat maybe we need to mm. question that assumption yeah and also a question about during a hybrid meeting how do you make the people who are virtual still feel part yeah. of it so there's no proximity bias it's a really important art and i'm not saying it's easy it's something we talk about in the supercharger teams comms and the fixing meetings workshop i'm going to give some information about our youtube library of past taster sessions at the end if you're particularly working on that interesting nugget we've got some stuff in the other previous iterations of this kind of live session where you can go and have a look so let's uh, kind of move into the, the sort of the second bit of our agenda uh, and again I want to open out and perhaps revisit some things that have already started to show themselves that I think are very much still on our own minds and the minds of organizations when it comes to just continuing to refine and get better at our approach to hybrid working lots of interesting things have changed when it comes to well-being and lifestyle and the important part that that plays um lots of organizations had a policy and it was kind of on an hr checklist and they were probably doing some things but i think you know the grinder that we've all been through over the last nearly three years now has made us finally really truly recognize the importance of this stuff both personally and in our households and in our teams and in our organizations um, but the thing i'm always very conscious of when i'm talking to anyone about hybrid working is that the experiences of the last three years have been wildly different for different people and continue to be incredibly different for different people as well so you know, at one end, you might have someone who is in a single person household, maybe also in a pretty rural area, maybe also, you know, for the solid end of 18 months was isolating because they were clinically vulnerable. You know, that person hasn't seen a lot of humans for a long time. And that may still be a challenging part of the hybrid working experience. And then in someone else's life, you might think I've not been alone for three years. <laughs> you know, there's several adults in the household. I might also be juggling childcare. And there were periods where we were trying to some of us get homeschooling done as well. And, and there would be many different stories in between that. And some of us have had different stories, even at the unit of one person at different points over the three years. Um, some people have said oh it's now easier to take a break they've said things like i can have a middle of the day nap i can go out and do a little bit of speed weeding at lunchtime you know i've got back that commute time i'm sleeping better other people have said i actually find it harder to make myself have a lunch hour because i'm trying to fit everything in between the school runs or you know i feel like i should be available all the time because work is just there inside the laptop so keeping an eye on that kind of breaks and the operational and tactical refueling aspect of the hybrid working experiences is really, really important. And in the full workshops, we go into this a lot more. Um, and then also the deep fuel. So many times I talk to people where they say, I've kind of held it together, but like the way I've held it together in both work me and life me is by kind of just hitting the ejector seat button on the stuff that was just for me. So like knowing that thing that gives you deep fuel that that you might find yourself incorrectly thinking is a luxury or a guilty pleasure and making sure that we bring that back and include that, you know, and at a tactical level, like, let's not just say that well-being is a thing we believe in. Let's actually look at ways of doing it in a practical level. There's only three here. There's loads more that people bring to other workshops, but like having well-being check-ins at the start of meetings, you know, bring in, in some of that water cooler stuff that we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, we have a very popular thread on our own Think Productive Slack called Truth Tuesday, where one of the teams says, it's Tuesday, what's your truth? And people just share to the extent they're comfortable, how it's going, what they're feeling, what challenges they might be facing this week. And I think it's really, really helped. I mean, we were pretty close and sherry people beforehand, but I think it's it's really allowed us to kind of understand each other's lives during these times and, and to be able to both ask for and offer support and, and kind of solidarity when it's needed. Um, and then the kind of the well-being thing, 
again, those of you who've been on the um, way of the Productivity Ninja workshop will know that one of the nine characteristics of the Productivity Ninja is human, not superhero. And I feel it's just become more okay for some of us to admit that, you know, we are humans and sometimes we're having a bad day and we need help and forgiveness and all that kind of good stuff as well. Let's just extend that as well. Oh, Kate, any comment that's got capital letters in draws my eyes <laughs> as well. It's very annoying to see her and certain TV commenters is still talking about people. Yes, I don't even need to read the rest of that. Like, and not just TV commentators, but sometimes business leaders, sometimes politicians. Like, you know, the work from home thing has not been easy for most of us. And it can be done incredibly successfully, both for individuals and their households and the businesses they work for as well. We just need to get it right and think about it. So I've got a couple of modules left, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A before our formal wave off, but also we can stay around for after the show as well. Um, connection and inclusion, community, friendships, support, you know, all of us are to some extent social animals. I'm not a huge social animal, but I do need a little bit of it sometimes. Um, and a lot of the kind of ways we got that social fuel and connection were suddenly ripped away and we're maybe still trying to work out how to reinvent and replace them. Um, and some interesting effects have started to break out, you know, has the sort of our bubble of the universe collapsed a bit, you know, you might have gone to the office, but on the way to where your little team sit, you might have walked through the bit where the finance team sit, and you would have waved and said hello to the friends in other teams, you might have met them at the photocopier or the water cooler. Um, Kate says, we need to stop confusing people's free time with their availability. I agree with your five exclamation marks on that one, Kate. Fully, fully affirm that. Um, so maybe we don't encounter those wider colleagues and wider teams as much as we used to. Do we feel a little bit more siloed and isolated in terms of the internal kind of structure of the organization? Do we need new ways of building wider awareness of what's going on? Uh, Rose says there, you don't have the learning and the information source that you get from just overhearing things in the office. Mm -hmm. So those of you involved in company comms, new ways of getting that chat out there. What does it mean to join an organization fully remotely? You know, for the middle of the pandemic, we were doing online workshops with people who'd been working for their organization for a year and had never physically been to an office and never met any of their colleagues in person. We're not quite in that place anymore, but those were interesting times. How do we connect? How do we learn? How do we develop? How do we build the networks that are part of getting stuff done effectively? So we talk about you know, how can we do some of that stuff in new ways? So, you know, maybe using some of the digital platforms and or our newly available time physically together to do some of that stuff that really is about the connecting and the relationships and the culture and the sort of osmosis kind of absorption of what's going on. Uh, so we use a thing on our Slack called Kudos, where, you know, if something's gone well or we're grateful to a colleague, we share and affirm that. Um, and even in lockdown, we had social gatherings. You know, a lot of those pictures there predate the, the big change. But you can see there in the top right, that was our Think Productive. I think it was the first year of lockdown, our Christmas quiz. That's me on the top row with the antlers. I don't know why I'm looking so sad because I had actually just won that quiz and thing. Um, Alyssa there, not realizing a colleague was expecting until they actually went on maternity leave. Yeah, things that you would naturally discover just by being around each other. Moments to kind of celebrate success and do that kind of stuff that would happen naturally in shared spaces. You know, and, and I recognize we are in the era where we are starting to regather. Um, and but also there was the interesting comment earlier on, which was that that when we are gathering in person, maybe those moments are actually not to just gather and do work next to each other. Maybe they are about doing some of this stuff that's really, really important. Lee, I really like Will's um, jam board with their mm. monthly wall of vain, where Ooh. they shout out about their own successes and about their colleague appreciation as well. So I'm now thinking, do we need to change the rules for the QDOS channel that we can self-QDOS? Mm. I'll have a think about that. Thank you, Will. Yeah. 
Um, and then two things just to finish this section. Um, and again, this is work in progress. I talked about how different people's experience of this is different. Different people's remote working place is very different. You know, if you were someone who had the garden shed with the fast fiber already up and ready to go before the pandemic and was already doing quite a lot of remote working, you maybe didn't notice as big a change in a challenge as some people who literally first week had their laptop on an ironing board trying to like 4G tether because that was the only internet they had, you know, maybe in a studio flat or a, a shared household, multiple occupancy, lots of lots of other people around as well. And I'm starting to notice organizations now, especially as they're repurposing their like physical estate and their buildings saying, okay, well, we are now in less need for a certain amount of square footage. Do we need to some extent start thinking about what our role as employers is to try and even up some of this stuff, you know? So uh, there's lots of people now who've, you know, got work, you know, home office furniture supplied by work. Maybe they've got bigger monitors sent home. You know, I've known people like be able to get, you know, ability to upgrade their Wi-Fi speed. You know, your organization's policy are different, but if you're someone who is in the workshop today as a leader or a manager, I would just like to point you to this phenomena and say that if you're going to invite people to do amazing remote working, you need to recognize that not everyone is trying to do that in an equal kind of environment. Um, and then the other thing I've been really excited by, and I so, so want us to hold on to, as this just becomes the way we do work, is the, how the, the arrival of remote in a, in a way that many people have been asking for for years and had maybe not got, um, has just allowed such a, a wider range of talents to be brought to the game and has allowed people many more opportunities that might have been difficult or have had you know access barriers to them before. And I certainly noticed around, around the two year mark of this where organizations were starting to say, oh, you can all come back to the office now. There was a lot of people that were, were, were quite nervous about that and saying like a lot of these things that I have found really, really helpful are these going to be taken away? Am I not going to be allowed to do this anymore? Um, we've had uh, a couple of comments in the chat about the particular challenges, but also gifts of the remote working for the neurodivergent population. As an autistic person, I didn't realize how much traveling and being around humans took out of me. I've enjoyed being able to do a lot of stuff from home and at work, but I also now we have gone back and done in-person workshops saying, yeah, there is a really, really important place for that. And I do get energy out of that. And I'm so looking forward to our own team's two-day gathering in the summer. We only get together twice a year. So I would invite people to just think again about the circumstances and situations of other people. And particularly if you're in leadership, like let's hold on to the great things that were suddenly possible in terms of a more diverse and included workforce and not lose that. Um, in terms of the future workspace, I just want to say a couple of things. We started to cover quite a lot of this already. Um, this has started already. I know a couple of our clients who've done some really, really profound changes already with their estate and their premises. Like the office is going to be different and has already started to be different. And when and for what we go to the office has changed now. Like it is no longer relevant or useful to for the office to be a place with loads of solo work desks next to each other where we just go and do a load of stuff alongside each other like that central gathering place whatever it ends up being called whether we call it the office or we call it the hub or we call it the lounge or or the community center i've seen all sorts of new language in play like when and what we go there for and what that physical space looks like is starting to change. So a lot of floor plan is being repurposed for interaction areas and social areas and meeting areas and stuff like that. Um, some organizations, as Dennis says there, have been ahead of this and were prepared. Others are sort of still scrabbling to adapt and stuff like that. Um, and then the remote workplace, you know, do we even call it the home office anymore? You know, that started to change. 
um, people are thinking about how they use different rooms and spaces in their houses. Um, you know, we moved house a couple of times during the pandemic, which I don't recommend. I therefore spent a lot of time on right move. And I noticed that um, house listings were changing. You know, properties previously described as three bed house were now two beds plus double home office. Yeah. You know, people have built sheds, they've turned big walk in wardrobes into little offices where they can shut things away at the end. You know, there's a whole kind of new frontier, and this great experiment is still ongoing, I think, when it comes to what the physical workspace where we gather looks like, what the home workspace or the remote workspace looks like. And then people are also starting to play with this third option of the co-working space or little community working hubs. I've known neighbours down the street from each other saying, I find home working lonely. So we'll come to your dining room on a Tuesday and we'll come to my dining room on a Thursday and we'll just get a bit of that tandem working stuff going on. And I'll walk your dog and you can walk my dog and all those kind of things as well. Um, so we are advertised to finish at 14.45. So what I'm gonna do is kind of formally wrap up the workshop um, in a way that those of you who need to go can get a clean exit. But we are going to offer this kind of after show mode where we can do a little bit more sort of Q&A and discussion. I shall just fix my camera that is misbehaving. Um, but we'll make sure those of you who need to go kind of get what you need to go beforehand. So we have been here today for a little insight into some of our work at Think Productive. Uh, if you've not met us before, we're a training and coaching company about work and well-being. We did all of that stuff before the grand change to hybrid working, uh, but particularly what we've been doing today is giving you a little taster from three of our workshops from our hybrid working trilogy as well. Uh, I'm going to put in the chat, and those of you might want to uh, kind of copy and paste it. I'm going to put in the chat ways that you can stay in touch um, and that you can kind of also reach out and get other stuff from us as well. So here I am sharing uh, my email, uh, the website that you can visit for all sorts of stuff as well. Um, ooh, hang on. I've done the wrong thing. <laughs> um, give me a moment. My email, I've got a link there to the website. Uh, you can also have a look on the website, our upcoming public workshops. And there's also a collection of the past 20 of these free Taster Productivity Ninja Skills workshops available on our YouTube channel. So just search for Think Productive on YouTube and you will find uh, 20 of these little mini sessions on all sorts of other topics that we're interested in as well. And we've got more coming up each month and you can book on the future ones there as well at that final link. Um, thank you very much. Um, hmm, I can select from chat, but copy isn't working. Ah, that might be to do with the security settings in webinar. Basically, just head to Think Productive on YouTube or uh, head to our website, and you can also get the same stuff there as well. Uh, so that's our official finish. Um, we've still got well over 100 people on the workshop. So let's kind of move into like after show mode. We'll continue the recording. If anybody you're watching this back on YouTube, uh, you're really interested in what happens in the Q&A in the chat, hang around. Um, but yeah, let's get some more thoughts going in the chat. If you've got something else you would like to discuss or any particular questions you would like to ask, either revisit something we were talking about um, or bring up a new topic. And you know, we'll go five or 10 minutes extra to kind of see uh, what people are also interested in as well. Dee, did you notice anything else in the chat that we didn't get a chance to talk about or any other just, topics you wanted to share? No, I was just um, reflecting on when I joined Think Productive. It's my mm -hmm. first job working outside of um, an office um, and it was really brilliant to be sent everything that I need. So anything that I would have had in the office has been provided for me at home. Mm -hmm. So laptop, printer, camera, um, and I think more and more companies are doing that. Um, someone mentioned also in the chat that their company sends mugs and coffee beans to. Oh, nice. I would always be happy to receive those. I thought that was really nice. And I've seen more and more on LinkedIn people starting a new job and kind of proudly showing a photo of all the goodies they've been sent. Yeah. 
welcome um, packs like welcome really packs important. with coffee and bars and um yeah I just thought that was a really nice touch I've even known a team where they have a company uniform and they're not required to wear it whilst remote working but I've actually known people say they still put on the company uniform when they're like quotes unquote going to work um and then of course they get to change again at the end of the working day and there's just a sort of an interesting mental book ending of the work day even though you might not physically leave the house and it's cheaper yeah. as well you don't want to if you've got oh, yeah. other clothes you can wear great definitely i'm not wearing a branded think productive shirt today because they don't exist but i am using my branded coffee mug yeah. so you know there's some level of that going on as well yeah, I was sent lots of books and a bit of stationery and things when I joined Think Productive as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just nice to get something through the post. Sarah's raised in a really interesting one. Um, the question is, do you have any views on when going back into the office is recommended as opposed to mandatory? But managers interpret that differently. So there's not a similar approach for different teams. Yeah, I think... We're sort of getting through some of that tension. I think that tension was most manifest about a year or a year and a half ago when the sort of first opportunities to return were happening. Um, I, I would say invite them to join the conversation through sessions like this, you know, sessions which see the remote and hybrid working as an opportunity, some ways that can really contribute to great productive individuals and teams but also have like well-being benefits as long as we keep an eye on some of the challenges um and you know i particularly have sort of winced uh, and that sort of section where we talked about community and connection and inclusion and 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 access i particularly sort of winced when like organizations said everyone will come back and you will come back on these set days and you know there are some companies who are attempting that i'm not sure how successful they will be as well. Um, Kate says, I have a question for the group, if that's allowed. We have teams located in lots of different countries, so we don't often have a chance to all be together. Does anyone have any good examples of social activities to keep virtual teams connected? In the past, we've had a virtual magician. Wow, I love this. A virtual magician done virtual escape rooms and even drag queen musical bingo. Right, well, first of all, we're all going, those sound amazing. Um, I'm, what's a virtual magician? I will do some Googling later this afternoon. Um, yes, not another Zoom quiz, please. Yeah, I think we all got a bit bored of those in the early days. Yeah, um, virtual gatherings are interesting. You can kind of have the informal, like week to week ones, like Wormhole. Uh, we do have Think Productive All Hands meetings a couple of times a year across. Uh, across the world because it's not just a UK business we've got teams in Australia New Zealand Western and Northern Europe North America we tend to have like a show and tell kind of format to some of those where a couple of people are maybe bring something that is work related but maybe something that isn't work related for a little sort of 10 minute thing as well Alan Hudson is the magician okay I don't have the ability to write things down right now dear but like Alan Hudson let's book yeah. him yeah I'm writing him down Eager there says virtual workouts. Yeah, a bit of the Pilates. Who was that guy that had us all doing star jumps in the beginning of the pandemic? The body coach. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I lasted about three weeks of that as well. Virtual cup of tea every week. We started having movie chats, book chats. Now, this is an interesting one. Thank you for reminding us that about that, Will. What I have found is little sort of niche interest communities are kind of easier to set up in organizations. Like maybe you thought you were the only person in your organization who was really into crochet, but now you realize that there are loads of other of them, but they're up in Glasgow and you're in Cardiff and, you know, virtual crochet hour it's a thing somebody has actually told me about this maybe you join together to discuss your favorite netflix series you know um what did i watch recently uh lockwood and co really really enjoyed that niche kind of genre stuff but i would be very happy to sit and chat to somebody i'd never met about what they thought about that as well social channels on teams and Paul there saying that it's been different in different sectors, mm. you know, um, organizations where they kind of have a lot of estate and they kind of feel, well, we've got all these buildings, people should be in them. Um, again, that's wearing off, I think. I think the sort of assumptions that the only way to do this is to have everyone return. We're sort of moving a little bit 
past that thing. Willow says, I wonder how to do social discussion in medium and large organizations. I think sort of in the same way where you might do that on the internet in your outside of work life, like bulletin boards, websites with kind of discussion forums, all that kind of stuff. Um, Nick there. Um, yeah, let's just get together for tea and cake. Like everyone bring a cake. I've even known organizations send cake to people in order to say like, we really are having cake time in the way that we would have done it in the office or something like that. Um, I've known people deliver takeaways like so you're having a working lunch, but you're actually having a lunch that somebody else hasn't provided as well. Um, Will there, we're looking at some tools, coffee roulette. Yeah, that's an interesting one. That's a sort of within organization, meet and connect kind of people. I think most of the versions of that, you can either say, give me someone who's in my department who's signed up for that, or give me someone in my kind of division or give me like anyone in my organization or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't think I'd personally be into that, but I know people who find that kind of stuff really, really useful as well cool what else has come up oh emma's a fan of coffee roulette there you go willow says i'm interested in which tenant ms teams app for both productivity and collaboration be it work or social yeah i think people are still finding their way with teams like you know and there's a kind of a skills difference still like some people are kind of really into it and using all the features some people are still struggling um, so I think really maybe just concentrating on like the key features that you're all going to try and get to use um, so that everyone can participate and stuff like that. Amy says, is this session going to be available on Watchback? Yes, it's going to be up on YouTube within about 48 hours, along with all the other previous sessions as well. Just go and find Think Productive on YouTube search for our playlists and you will find the ninja skill session playlists and that will be added along the sort of 20 other plus that are already there as well cool we're into 10 minutes overrun we still got 60 people here so maybe they're all just lurking d to ask whether or not to see whether anyone else is going to ask something and stuff like that but if you have got a specific question or something you want to share please put it in the chat d and i will bring it into the conversation and react but if you think you're gonna you need to go because the kettle is calling or the loo we're probably going to wind up in about two or three minutes unless something brilliantly new comes up as well oh d thank you very much for the link to the playlists as well lovely to have so many people here i saw some familiar names clients and previous delegates i saw many many new names as well and of course, we're only giving you a little quick fire glimpse into some of this stuff. We've got, you know, three sessions that press on this particularly, and they are two hour sessions or indeed one of them's a three hour session as well. Thank you very much to everyone who joined. Right, the room is emptying. So my final Easter egg is if you are the person that watched this on YouTube and you've got all the way to the end, well done. Thank you for joining us all the way to the record end of the recording and again you can find out all about more stuff that we can do for you or more resources that we can give you for free just go to our website www.thinkproductive.co.uk and you will find all sorts of good stuff there and i am going to press stop recording in three two one and we're out bye <laughs>